Écoutez, à midi. Quelle heure est-il Il est midi. C'est l'heure de déjeuner. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a à manger Les saucisses. Morning everyone! Hi! I'm just gonna sit here for a little bit while everyone arrives. Well, actually, I think I'll get started because um, cause I can just be doodling while you all arrive. Because the idea, the beginning, the first part of making this batik is doing a little drawing of what we want to batik. So I'm just going to start drawing. Wait for you to turn up. Shall I draw? Hmm. I'm going to do a. Oh, morning, Emma. You're the first one here, apart from me, obviously. I was here first. Um, what shall I draw? I'm going to draw a tree. That's what I like to draw trees and plants and stuff, generally. So if you're joining, you could start drawing as well. The design you're going to do on your batik. Keep it fairly simple. You don't want to um, you know you're going to be doing this all with glue and paint so you want to keep your ideas simple. And there'll always be chances to make them more complicated as we go along. So we're doing batik this morning. Um, for you of the, that don't know it, batik is a it's a way of painting fabric where you use a resist. Traditionally, you'd use wax, but for this morning, we're going to use PVA glue instead of wax, which is great because you can do it with kids easily, you can do it at home easily, and you get a really nice similar effect. Um, so I'm just doing my drawing here getting started with what I'm planning to do on my batik, keeping it nice and simple. Uh, it's quite important if you're doing your drawing to be doing it in something like pencil because if you use a water soluble felt tip pen then you're going to end up with funny coloured glue when you do the batiking. So I'm just going to keep drawing for a bit, see if anyone else wants to join us. If you're watching give me a shout out and say hello, it's nice to hear from you. Nice to know I'm not just talking to myself. Not that I mind. So if you're getting started, you can just be doing what I'm doing and drawing your design out. So I'm doing a really stylized tree. You get an idea of the kind of thing you want to do. You want to keep it simple, obviously just lines at this point, just to give yourself something to work off of. So you should have some fabric, it said you needed fabric in the list. You want it to be cotton, this is 100% cotton and it's been washed and dried so that I know it's going to soak up all the glue and the paint nicely. So you get your fabric ready, you've got your drawing ready, you need your PVA glue so you want the 
kids PVA glue, the water soluble stuff, the stuff that's going to wash out once you're done. Uh, you need some paint brushes, some little ones and some bigger ones like this. Doo, doo, doo. Um, your acrylic paints, but they come in later. And I'm just going to get started. So I'm going to... Oh, I don't know. Maybe I should get a few more minutes. What do you think? Should I just get started? I'll give it a few more minutes. I'll keep drawing. I was having fun. Um, right, I'll do some, uh, I'll do some big leaves on my tree. That'd be nice. So what I like best about anything like Batik is you're taking your creativity and you're putting it through a bit of a process and you can't really control what comes out the end. And something about that really appeals to me, the way that um, you kind of end up with something a bit random. It seems like it doesn't let your inner critic get all noisy because you've ended up with something which, which uh, you didn't really, you almost didn't make. It was made by the process. So I always enjoy that. Oh, hi, John Joe. Thanks for joining us. So is everyone getting on with making their drawing for their batik? So this is what I'm doing, I'm doing a nice tree. Has anyone watching had a go at batik before? Has anyone tried batik before? Maybe tried it with hot wax, which is so much fun. You should definitely, definitely give batiking with hot wax a go. But it is a lot messier to do at home. And if you're doing it, especially with small kids, it is not ideal because you will get hot wax everywhere. And obviously that can be a little bit dangerous and burny. Okay, so I think I might be done there. Finish my tree drawing. Got my cotton fabric. Um, so I'm going to put that over the drawing and I think it's time for a close up as I'm going to start doing the gluing. I'll just move the camera down so you can see what I'm up to. There we go. So I realised when I was doing my little taster batik video that it was really hard um, doing a video where I was painting white glue onto white fabric. No one could see what I was doing. So I've actually added in a little bit of blue poster paint to my glue to make it blue uh, so you can see what I'm doing. But it is just normal white PVA glue with a little bit of blue poster paint which should wash out fine because it's totally water soluble the poster paint. Um, but obviously it's my batik, so if it ends up a bit blue, the glue lines, doesn't really matter. Uh, I would recommend if you're doing it at home, just to use normal white PVA. You've got to use the kids stuff, you've got to use water soluble stuff. You can use other craft glues as long as they wash out. But um, PVA works great and is easily available. So I've got my white cotton fabric over my drawing. You see, there's my drawing of the tree. My fabric's over it and I'm going to start painting the glue on. So, 
You can use quite a small brush for this. I'm going to get a big blob of glue on the brush. And then I'm going to start painting it on. Now, the trick when you're painting the glue on is to create like a line of glue, like a little ridge. Um, I've had a bit of discussion with some people about what the right word for this is. We thought maybe if it's icing, you'd call it a piping um, or you might call it beading, a little beading of glue. And the idea of this, creating this ridge of glue as you go along, is that it will really soak into the fabric. If you spread the glue on, then you're going to end up with, uh, it, won't, um, it won't soak in properly. And then when you use your paint, your resistor won't work. Oh, we're quite quiet this morning. I guess everyone is enjoying a slightly more relaxed lockdown. Just getting out and about, enjoying their bank holiday weekend. Don't know where you all are, but the weather in Leicester is quite windy. Don't know what everyone thinks of the wind, but I am not a massive fan, I've got to say. Don't mind the rain. Rain's just all part of living in England. But the wind really, like, I don't know, really offends me. So I'm just painting on my PVA now. And I'm using PVA mixed with poster paint so you can see what I'm doing. But if you're doing this at home, just um, stick with your clear white PVA. Um, if you're lucky you will have used a thinner fabric than me because I can barely see my drawing through this one but that's okay I don't mind improvising a bit oh improvise the word improvising there So you want to be going over your glue lines and if you're doing them quite thin, then make sure you go back over them a bit. Just make sure they all join up because the fabric will resist the glue soaking into it a bit. So you want to make sure you get a nice continuous line. If anyone watching this video feels like giving it a share, that would be really nice. Let your friends know what you're up to, let them know what we're up to. It really helps with the visibility of these videos. It's much better doing the uh, batiking with a PVA glue. You can really see, see it coming on, can't you? Really shows up nicely.
you're doing it with uh, younger kids or you are a kid watching this, you do not have to worry about being so pr precise. I'm just, um, I'm just enjoying adding detail, but honestly, whatever you do with the glue, it's gonna look great because we're gonna put it through this process that's gonna make it look really, really cool. You can just have big splodges and stripes. Whatever you do is gonna look amazing because it's your art, so just do whatever you want. make sure if you look anywhere and you think oh it doesn't look like the glue is very thick there I haven't done a I'm not sure I've done a good enough job just go back over it add a bit more glue so I have seen this done with a uh, people use like a squirty bottle that you squeeze the glue out of and it looks really easy when they're doing it and like oh what a great way of doing it that would be really quick so I tried but um, it's just really hard to control how much glue comes out and you end up with your your piping lines being way too thick and then it just spreads out and um, covers your whole fabric in glue basically you can't see any of your design so I think using a paintbrush is much more controlled and also it's something everyone's got well I say everyone lots of people have paintbrushes in their home so whereas you might not have the right kind of squeezy bottle. I don't know if anyone's seen, but I've added my next live workshop next week. Um, it's going to be making, doing macrame. It's a bit of a passion of mine, macrame. Macrame is tying knots. It's all decorative knots. We're gonna make macrame plant hangers next week, which are Obviously very 70s, but making a bit of a comeback. It's been quite popular at the moment. Uh, so if anyone wants to learn how to make macrame plant hangers, we're doing that next week, 11 till 12 on Saturday. And there's an event in, you can see all the details of that. So you should check that out. All you need to join in with that is lots and lots of string about 20 meters of string or any kind of rope or anything, garden twine, something like that will do. If you're just joining us now, because we've got a few more people watching, we're working on a batik at the moment using PVA glue instead of wax as the resist. Uh, this might not look like PVA glue because it's a beautiful shade of blue, but I've just mixed in a bit of poster paint so you can see what I'm doing. Um, if you're doing it at home, I recommend you just work with your normal white PVA glue. There's no need to put poster paint in it. I've just done that for your benefit so you can see what I'm up to. So 
I'm just painting my little leaves on here. I'm just going to work on this for another five minutes and I'm going to do have a bit of a blue Peter moment and switch over to here's one I did earlier. Which if you watch my little taster video I did Thursday night, you might already be at that stage. You might have all your gluing done. It might be nice and dry. <laughs> um, Emma, next week we're making macrame plant hangers. Don't know if you've ever tried macrame. It's, um, it's all tying knots. So there's an event for it. Oh, Lisa, you're here too. That's great. Yeah, Lisa's really good at making macrame plant hangers. She's made some beautiful ones. I'm a little bit obsessed with house plants at the moment. I think it's this lockdown. I'm just at home with my house plants all the time, staring at them, thinking of ways to make them look pretty. So there seems to be a bit of a theme to my workshops, uh, as you'll see in a minute when I show you the, the batiking I did earlier. These house plants are just looking at me all the time. Oh, Emma, they last forever, right? That's the idea. Well, if you want to make another one, Emma, you can make another one with us on Saturday. But I don't know, you might know more than me about making them if you've been doing it since Okay, so I'm getting to the end of what I'm going to do on here because the thing about the problem with doing batiking with PVA is it is a bit slower. Uh, when you do it with wax, it's a really fast process. You do the wax, it dries straight away, you can just get on with your painting. But with PVA, you need to leave it for sort of six hours to make sure it's dry, even a bit longer. I think I left mine overnight to make sure it's properly dry. Uh, so I'm not going to paint this one right now. What I'm going to do is have a bit of a, here's one I made earlier moment, and bring in one I made earlier. Now, you probably can't see, oh, maybe you can see what this is. Uh, this is one I did yesterday, and it's of a house plant. <laughs> uh, they're all of house plants, everything's house plants. Let me take this one out of the way. We've got a few more people joining us. If you're just joining us, we're doing batiking with PVA glue on fabric. I just need to work out. So once your PVA glue is dried, and you've got it lovely soaked into your fabric, what you should do is have a look at both sides. Now you should be able to see your design just as easily. Doesn't matter what size it is, because that means your PVA is really soaked through the fabric yeah, you see? And you, you should be able to colour it in without the colours running everywhere. Um, 
you can, if it doesn't look like it's soaked through the fabric, if there are bits where the line are missing, you can just touch up the PVA, but then you will have to let it dry again for six hours. So it might be worth just going for it and uh, seeing what amazing effects you get. So just gonna line my design out and do it this way around so you guys can really enjoy the experience. Now I'm using acrylic paints with batiking, like traditionally you would have used dyes um, you can of course use dye, but uh, with this technique, because we have to wash it so vigorously to get the PVA out, I recommend using something like acrylic, because it's so much, it's so much less runny, like with the dyes, you have to be really careful to make sure they're all set before you wash it out. With the, with the acrylic, it's, as soon as it's dry, it's set and you can just wash it really hard to get that PVA glue out. So. I recommend using acrylic paint. Uh, saying that, I also recommend using some water because that makes it nice and runny so you can get the sort of same effect you might get with a dye. Uh, other paints are of course available but you need to use something permanent. So try for something like that. Um, so there's a couple more people if you're just joining us. We're doing batiking using PVA. Here's one I made earlier, so it's had a nice long time to dry. I've painted my pattern out in PVA and now I'm gonna start coloring it in. Oh yeah. It's obviously, it's a house plant because I'm obsessed with house plants at the moment. And I'm gonna make a start. So, when you are, huh, I think that's actually, actually this back. can't even tell what the back and the front is yeah that was the back so I'm, I'm gonna work on the front but it doesn't really matter because like I said it should have soaked through all the way so when you're adding your paint in what I would recommend is just as much as possible trying not to paint over your PVA it should be fine and if you do, it doesn't matter and it will just wash out all the same. But it just makes it a little bit easier. Because with the acrylic paint being quite strong stuff, just means you have to scrub a little bit harder if there's acrylic paint on top of your PVA. And you see how I've, I've painted in that leaf there? but my paints all stayed nicely inside the leaf. That's because of all the glue around the edge acting as a resist. Okay, before I put it back down, I'm gonna put on a green smudge. Ooh, green smudges everywhere. Right, next leaf. So please, if you do make a batik, please send us a photo. I know I haven't sorted it out, but I am going to be making a photo album with all the lovely work that we're doing at these, these craft workshops, putting it on the group so that you can, you can take a look and see what everyone else has been up to, see my finished pieces, because quite often we don't get to finish them in the workshop, which is the nature of art, not easily finished in an hour. I think it would be a, be more of an issue. If I was getting them finished in an hour, I'd feel like I was really rushing them. So, So just remember, you can always mix nicer colours than the ones that come out of the tube. So keep mixing. So 
So here you can see the green is actually spread out of the leaf and that is probably because I've used just a little bit too much paint. I can see that it has leaked a bit in the PVA glue but it's not too bad. Um, but uh, if you use a little bit too much wet paint it will spread underneath on the plastic. So just, just try and keep it a bit drier than I have been. really tricky getting the right balance between some water so that it spreads out nicely and too much water and then suddenly it's colouring your whole fabric so I think you'll manage though just just keep experimenting really. Now it wouldn't be one of my house plants if there wasn't a little bit of brown on the leaves so I'm just going to make I'm going to have a like slightly dying leaf down here I don't know if anyone else watching this video has seen the work of John Joe Elliott. He's one of the artists at Studio Names, also does a lot of great workshop stuff. Um, but he does loads of beautiful paintings of house plants. They're really amazing. And after I did this, I thought, oh, done a John Joe Elliott homage. It's not what I set out to do. It's just kind of how it turned out. So John Joe, if you're still watching, I hope you don't mind. Hope everyone's getting on okay. Finding it nice and relaxing. I'm certainly enjoying myself. Really been enjoying running these workshops. It's nice to just put an hour aside to sit down and do some, some crafting. When you do this kind of thing all the time, you can sometimes forget to enjoy it, which is a real, real shame. So it's really nice to take a moment and be really mindful with what you're doing, really enjoy the process. Okay, I think that's that's all my leaves done. Might add a bit more brown in. Doesn't really seem like a, a real house plant unless there's a few leaves that are uh, suffering a bit. This 
this uh, this painting was inspired by my new pothos plant, which I got some cuttings. I just potted up this week, and it's looking very lovely. So I thought I'd I'd make a painting of it. I did imagine the pot though, it's not in quite as nice a pot. Right, so pot now. What colours for my pot? I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with a yellow, but maybe I'm gonna mix the yellow with a little bit of ochre, make it a slightly richer yellow, more golden. And I'm not worrying too much here when I'm close to the lines about just painting on top of them because honestly when you wash it out it will come off. You just have to put a little bit of extra in effort into the washing. You also just want to make sure, just make sure you add a little bit of water because you want the paint to soak into the fabric as well. Otherwise, it can wash off a bit more easily when you come to wash it off later. So add, always make sure there's a bit of water in with your paint. Just realised that because I hadn't added any water to this paint. I thought, oh might not be so clever. Right, so that's the bottom bit of my pot done. Let's add a little bit of brown at the bottom, get a bit of shading. I think it's impossible for me to paint without getting my fingers involved. I always start off with a brush really nice and tidy and then I'm like, oh, I'll just use my finger for that. So, you know, you might be a much tidier person than I am, but I can't help myself. Okay, so next bit of the pot up here. I think I'm going to use, I've got this nice, Pale blue, I'm just going to add a bit of white to it. Maybe the. that colour. And I'm just not worrying about the dots at all, I'm just painting straight over the dots of blue I've done here and that will hopefully look okay. What it might do is you might end up with like still dots, but they might just be a little bit blue, which will probably look quite nice. So I'm gonna just not worry too much about that. It's all quite traditional this, isn't it? I've got my uh, green leaves and I'm about to do brown soil. Not very creative, but uh, Enjoyable for me. And there we go. I've accidentally added a bit of blue in the soil, so I've been a bit more creative than I meant to. Right, so 
Last but not least, I'm just going to add in a quick background colour. I think I'm going to keep it quite boring, go with a nice dark background, maybe like black and blue. You can use a bigger brush so it's a bit quicker. So I'm using quite a bit of water with this, so it's spreading out quite quickly. So at the moment, I'm keeping it away from my leaves. When I, I'm gonna put a bit more effort into painting it on when I get closer to the leaves so that it hopefully won't spread into them. You can do this on any kind of fabric as well. You can do this on, well, as long as it's, it's cotton, you can do it on clothes and stuff. So you can do your own t-shirts, your own scars. Uh, you can, if you want to seal the, uh, uh, the acrylic for lots of washes, just um, make sure you iron it. But apart from that, acrylic's pretty permanent. So yeah, you can make really nice fabric stuff with it. Lots of options. Doesn't have to. There we go, I'm adding some blue in. Um, doesn't just have to be uh, this, uh, a picture like this one. Yeah, I think I'm going to put this on the wall maybe. Maybe get it a nice frame. Well, I mean, I'll see what it's like when it's finished. Going to work a bit on doing a little sort of more detail around the leaves. Try not to get too much bleed. Fifteen minutes left. I'm going to show you how to wash the PVA out in a minute. Um, not on this one. 
this one won't be finished because uh, it will need to dry. But I've got another one I made earlier. That's what this workshop be called. One I made earlier, critiquing with Beth. So I'm just gonna finish this one off though first, I think, because I'm really enjoying it. Add a bit of brown into the background. I think that might look quite good. Oh yeah, I like that. Got some volunteer green. Right, so nearly finished painting, just bear with me. I hope you're all getting on all right, getting your painting done. So I'm coming up to this uh, green splodge that leaked out of my leaf. And what I'm gonna try and do is just paint over it. So just make sure you use fairly thick paint because you don't want it, if it's runny, it might just follow that green back into leaf it came out of so there we go that's been a success I think there we go nice little cheat there 
one of the joys of using acrylic paint and not dye, so you can get away with that kind of thing. Okay, so now I'm just gonna have a little look back over and make sure I'm happy with all the paint. I mean, again, the beauty of it being acrylics is you can just wait till it dries and then work back over it. I'm just gonna add a little bit more, a little bit more shading in the round and about. Oh, here's a little bit I missed. So just when you're going over it, you can see if there's any little spots you might have missed. So you might want to add a little more paint, change the colour a little bit. Okay, so that's my batik finished. Just gonna move it out the way and I will show you how to wash out the glue. So make sure your acrylic paint is t entirely dry before you start washing out the glue. This one was maybe not the driest, but I think it's okay. Um, the best thing to do is to get some warm water and soak the glue for at least half an hour, because then when you come to wash it out, you'll have found that actually you don't really have to do very much, it's all dissolved. So this is one where I've soaked out the glue. Just going to... bring it out a bit and you might even find that you want to wash it a couple of times let it dry in between to really get the glue out but there we have it one I made earlier and all the glues come out so you literally just leave it to soak and the glue will go away So I think we're gonna maybe finish a little bit early today because I think we've covered everything. If anyone's got any questions, just give me a shout. Hope you're all getting on well with your batiking. Um, and it's so much fun. You can do lots of different things with it. I hope you do. I hope you try lots of different options. And please send us your photos. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. There's loads of great tutorials there on how to do all sorts of different things. And I will see you next week when we're going to make macrame plant hangers, which I'm really excited about because I really love making them. And I got some new beads. You don't need beads, but I got some. So I'm going to put beads on mine. If you do get uh, beads for your macrame plant hangers, make sure you get ones with really big holes because you've got to put your big thread through them. 
Oh, Emma, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. I hope I'll see you next week to make a macrame plant hanger. Um, okay then, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Bye bye. C'est l'heure de déjeuner. C'est l'heure. C'est l'heure de déjeuner. C'est l'heure de déjeuner. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a à manger Qu'est-ce qu'il y a